In the last video, we set up JSON server, we created the modules and the components for our application, and we added initial styles and the HTML for the components. In this video, we are going to set up ngrx. First, we are going to install all the libraries we need with one command. Now that we have all the libraries installed, we can start creating our first actions and reducers. First, we are going to create a customer.model.ts file inside the customers folder. We are going to add the customer interface inside. Now, we are going to create the customer service.ts file to have it ready for later. And now, we are going to create a state folder for all the files related to the customer state. And inside that folder, we are going to create a customer.actions.ts file and a customer.reducer.ts file. But before we start writing the code, let's look at the process for a second. When the user interacts with the template, the component dispatches an action, specifying the type of the action and the payload. The reducer that is listening for that action will take the slice of a state and the action being dispatched as arguments. Depending on the type of the action, the reducer will return a new state with the changes replacing the old state. So let's create a basic example in our application to see this clearly. First, we're going to initialize the root application state in the app.module.ts file. We import the store module and add it to the imports array. In the store module for root method, we could pass in a reducer for the root state in case we need it, but for now, we are not going to register any reducer here. Instead, we'll do that in the customer.module.ts file. Here, we import the store module Then we import the customer reducer and then we add the store module to the imports array and we are going to use the for feature method specifying the name of the slice of a state and the reducer that manages that slice. Let's load some data in our components from the store. We're going to open the customer.reducer.ts file and declare the initial state. And then we are going to define the customer reducer, passing in the initial state as the default value for the state and the action. Inside the reducer, we are going to add the switch statement that takes in the action type and in this example, we are going to have one action type, the load customers action. And in this case, it's going to take the current state and return it using the spread operator and adding a loading true property and a loaded false property. Let's save it. And we are also going to return the state as default. So now that we have our reducer, we can go ahead and dispatch an action from our component to load the customers. Add the following code to the customer.component.ts file. We are going to import the store. Then we are going to initialize the customers. We are going to inject the store in the constructor with type any for now. Then we are going to dispatch an action when the component is initialized using this that store that dispatch and passing the action of type load customers.
and last we are going to subscribe to the store and map over the customer state to get the customers. So let's save it and update the template so it displays the customers from the component. Now, if we go to the application, we should see the customers being loaded from the store. It's a basic example to illustrate how the component, the action, and the reducer work together. During the rest of this course, we'll be introducing more convenient ways to use them and some best practices. In the next video, we'll set up the store developers tool so we can expect our application in our browser when we're developing, and we'll continue building the application and introducing other important concepts. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, smash the like button if you like it, and share this course with any person that might be interested.